Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about the most notorious MTG financer of all time, and his name is Martin. Martin is known in the pharmaceutical arena for buying a company. Let's say the company is selling a drug to a consumer for $10. He'll buy out the company, including the patent, and he'll charge $10,000. That's just an example, but you kind of see what's going on. So he was interested in Magic the Gathering because in Magic the Gathering, there is no securities exchange commission that would prevent you from doing something like that. And this is actually the reason why he was found guilty. He was found guilty of security fraud. And pretty much Magic does not have a security exchange commis commission. So people can buy out as often as they want. And that's why you look at the reserve list and you look at all these spikes and spikes and spikes. It doesn't represent natural growth. I think a lot of this is hyped. When you have underground C at $500 because Star City bought out everybody. Or when you have the Misty Rainforest at $100 plus. That's just what you logically would do if you can buy out a card and there's no repercussion of it, right? So you bought out Underground C, there's no repercussion. The reserve list is the reserve list. There's no danger of a reprint and there's nothing anyone can do. If you had $10 million and you bought every single, let's assume $10 million could buy every single uh, Underground C. I don't know if that's true or not, but let's assume it's true. Then no one can play blue, black and legacy you would have a monopoly. So then you could charge $1,000 for a underground C. And essentially that is what's kind of happening here. That's why Martin was so interested in magic because magic is very liquid. You can go to any vendor, you can go to any local game store. Now you're gonna get 100% of the retail, no. But that being said, it is very liquid. I've heard stories and I think these are rumors and obviously I live in Texas and Texas is very close to Mexico. I heard there is a cocaine dealer in Houston who, to wash his assets, right, he buys magic cards and he buys large collections. And I have actually met him and the price he was giving was far better than any buy list. And I, but he only buys like dual lands, power nine, like these very easy to uh, sell cards. Seemed really, seemed like a nice guy. Uh, I don't know where he went. Uh, I don't know if he actually was. I mean, those were the rumors, right? Because he was making very, very expensive purchases all in a row. And if you had a collection worth more than $20,000, he would find you and then cut you a, a, a tremendous deal. There was something like not right with that deal. Because I've never seen margin. I've never seen anyone offer 70, 80%, right? That That's a lot of retail. So... Magic players were conflicted and they are actually, so this is what he is known for, unethical pricing practices and a subsequent string of security fraud charges, which he was found guilty, outrageous statements and strange, yeah. He's kind of a strange guy, but he's, I'm, I'm a collector of wine, art, and other goods. Can someone give me some resources on collecting rare cards? I don't know, like it's so strange, but obviously the move here would be buy reserve list cards and then eventually you would like triple your money and that's good for him. Convicted of security fraud conspiracy. Uh, this is from CNN Money, August 4th, uh, 5.38 p.m. Eastern time. Convicted of security fraud conspiracy Pretty interesting, uh, very, very interesting in terms of, so we don't have, magic is ungoverned, right? There's no, there's nothing preventing someone from manipulating the market like Star City Games has done time and time again. You cannot argue they haven't done it. I've seen it firsthand what it looks like. It looks like one day no one has Misty Rainforests, like literally no one has them. And then they stock, and then Star City Games, uh, a week or two later, has 400, 500 in stock. It's like, oh, well, that was convenient, wasn't it? And they would, oh. So they don't need to buy out everyone. They just need to buy out enough people that the people remaining are like, wait a second, I'm selling it for $12. They're selling it for 25 
can I get 20 for it? And they can get 20. And that's what happened with the Narwhals. Uh, the Narwhals, you don't need to buy out every single Narwhal. You just need a indicator. You just have to send a signal to the stores that someone is interested in Narwhals. And without any reason, a lot of store, a lot of these people who do the digital side, they don't really know magic. They just know numbers, right? So if a lot, if cards are moving very fast, they know that the card is popular. If cards are not moving fast, they know it's non popular, right? And it's very simple. Uh, you could probably even program a formula depending on your stock. I think that's what Strike Zone does because they don't allow you to buy more than eight copies. And then after a certain period of time, they don't let you buy more than four if the price, if people are really buying it. And then at a certain, another point in time, I think it locks. I've seen it like lock on me before. And I've seen it like restrict me to four copies. And I was like, mm, that's not the best, but all right, I'll buy the four copies. <laughs> Anyway, that is it. Leave me a comment below. Bye, guys.